Hi, welcome into my studio and today's going to be something very different. I'm going to show you how I draw this metallic object, a lizard, in pastel pencils. Now you've probably seen similar things online on YouTube, people doing silver pots and um, all that type of thing. And there's a few things to keep in mind, a few little tricks that make these things work. And the main thing is to use a grayed or a toned paper. Now the reason behind that is because it's a metal subject, it's all about the um, reflective properties of it and that really bright highlight. And of course the whitest white we can do is going to be the white of the paper. So by using a toned paper we can use our pencils then to make those highlights look a lot brighter. Now if I'd photographed this metal object on a piece of white paper, the camera then tries to compensate and make it a mid-tone grey and the paper looks grey and the subject looks washed out. When you take it in Photoshop, and increase the brightness it just doesn't look like a shiny object so what you find in most videos when people do these type of things they're using an off-white paper and then they boosted it back up a little bit perhaps in their image editing or video editing software but that's why I'm using a toned paper it's pastel matte it's a mid-tone gray works great for this subject and I hope you like the video Using very minimal supplies, is about um, 8 or 10 Derwent pencils, I think, a couple of those white um, Conti or Prismacolor pastel sticks. And then I've got a, to, for my extra black, I'm showing online a pit uh, charcoal pencil, but I'm actually going to be using the Creta Color 46012 black instead. It's just a bit blacker than most other um, pastel or charcoal pencils. And I'll do that right at the end to put in those real dark darks. There's no real set way I'm going to work on this because um, it's mainly a light subject so I'm not going to worry so much about going dark to light and light to dark and all that type of thing. I'm going to just get this outline in in the places it's required and then I'm going to you know start with the top work my way down pretty much in that order just so I'm not resting my hand on there. Just got a pencil on the side this is not a pure black it's a, a dark color and I'm just putting in the suggestions of the shadow in there. And of course that's going to really help to give that illusion of uh, it being a bit more three dimensional and actually sitting on a surface. Just using a cotton wool bud there just to give uh, a little bit of control over it while I blended the edge. I'm using kind of a, a salmon color because there's a little bit of reflection on various parts. So I'm not going to put the highlight in just yet. I'm just blocking that in. This is going to be quite a quick project as well. Actually, it only took me about an hour to do. I didn't go really hyper detailed with it. Just wanted to try out the principle myself. So I'm putting in a very, very light blue color. And that is basically the reflection of the sky onto the um, chrome of the pendant. So just blocking that in. Quite a bit of dust being created there. And so you can see white really shows it up as, you know, being a slightly different bluey color there as well. And I just thought that gave a bit of interest. I could have done this demonstration really with just black and white and produced a real silver look. But I did think that bit of color just, uh, as I said, give it a bit more interest. So lots of people are confused when they look at something shiny. They wonder, I wonder if do you actually do that and draw it and if you're ever confused I suggest you know take the image into Photoshop and start dragging the colors out and that will then you know give you a really good idea of um, the colored pencils that you actually need because sometimes it's difficult to see a color and obviously reflective surfaces are all about the reflections of the things that are around them so you know tackle them the same as anything else don't be frightened of it just because it's is something that's shiny and looks difficult. So I'm just looking at my reference, a photo I took myself, and I'm just, you know, copying what I'm seeing. I'm actually doing what I'm seeing. I'm trying not to let my mind play those um, little tricks that they love to do on artists and make you want to draw or paint what you think should be there as a color, not what's really there. And you can see already it's starting to have that impression of being three-dimensional. I'm starting to get some of the darks in as well, which is really going to begin to 
punch that effect up because it's going to make the shadow look not as dark. It's going to really start to make it look like it's lifting up from the surface of this pastel matte paper. And as I said, I'm not taking too much time over it. I just want to show you the techniques of uh, actually drawing or painting something shiny. So it would be exactly the same I'd be doing if I was doing oils. It would just be on canvas with brushes and several. I'd be doing the same principles. Pastel, as you know, if you watch any of my other videos, is very, very similar to oils and acrylics, but especially to oils. Now there's some quite dark edging in places. It's not uh, really the edging for the um, shadow, but there's a bit of where the actual uh, pendant is turning. There's a dark um, reflected black edge in there. So I'm just putting that in as well. Not sure how much of that is showing up on the video. So I've got that small piece of paper by the side of me. That's just what I'm resting my hand on, stopping the smudging. That's the only downfall really with pastels. They can smudge quite easily. Obviously pastel matte holds that pastel surface much better than a shiny paper and you won't be able to get the layers. But even still, it could still be smudged with a careless hand. And that's one thing you don't get with colored pencils. But as my primary subject is wildlife art, then I find pastels so much easier because I can put those lights over darks, which is usually something you can't do with colored pencils either. So I'm just softening. I re-established that um, shadow, just softened it off again. And now I'm using a stick because they got that bit more punch to the color just to really uh, increase the value of the white. Now it's a case of refinement. so really studying my ref image now and coming back in doing all those little nuances there's tiny little lines here and there that may not be showing up on the video but I can see them myself so I want to get those in that's the things that's making it look three-dimensional boost in that color again and that's giving it that really bright glow now I'm coming in with my real dark. Now this is not for the shadow, as I said, this is for that little very black edge that's in certain places. And you can see how that boost in that black up is really making the light look a lot more lighter, looking brighter. And that's because I'm increasing the tonal range. So when you get a real dark in there, that white will look real bright. So just a bit more refinement, got a nice sharp pencil. I don't sharpen my pencils with a um, razor blade like lots of pastel artists. I actually use a pastel or a pencil sharpness, not specifically for pastels. And I've got reviews showing which ones I use on there. But when I'm using Derwent and Carbothello pencils, they're that little bit harder than some brands and they sharpen very well with a crank handle pencil sharpener. So just a few more touches here and there, cleaning up a few edges. And it was a quick project, only an hour in real time. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope if you was uh, wondering how people did these shiny chrome type of subjects, that it's demystified it a bit for you and you'll try something yourself. Just a final few touches. Hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all again real soon. If you're looking for more art resources, I've really got you covered. I've got a dedicated tutorial website, that's jasonmorgan.co.uk. Lots of videos on there, ebook tutorials, you name it, it's on that site. I've got a Patreon art channel. So every month I put up brand new videos, and that could be pastel videos, oils, charcoals, they're full length videos. And there's also photo references with the Easy Trace line art on there. I've got quite a few hundred people supporting me, and that's on Patreon. And also, if you're after even more reference photos, I've got a dedicated website just packed and packed with reference photos. I think there's about 900 on there at the moment. So that's wildlifeart-online.com. Now, please, with my YouTube channel, new videos coming on here as well. If you can possibly subscribe to the channel, then you're never going to miss out on new videos.